Welcome back. Today I'm going to take a look at the French defense. Recently I expressed some frustration with the Karakhan defense, how my opponents have quite a few different ways, uh, you know, to take advantage of that. There are several known traps known to the chess community, not to me. And every time I encounter one, I, I'm never quite sure exactly how to, you know, how to play against it. Also, Black has to work really hard to equalize in the Karakhan defense. Uh, this is the French defense, which I have pulled up on the Lee Chess analysis board, which is E6 as a response to E4, rather than C6, which is the Karakhan defense. Both of them have the idea of protecting a D5 push, uh, you know, whether white plays D4 first or, you know, I mean, gets one of the knights out or whatever. Both C6 and E6 aim to defend the D5 square. The main differences, as I understand it, between the Karakhan and the French defense, uh, one is because the French defense goes here immediately. You're not getting the light squared bishop out that side anytime soon. Whereas in the Karakhan defense, because you've played this pawn and you're going to play the D pawn pretty soon, the light squared bishop can get out really quickly and easily. That's one difference. The other difference is in the Karakhan defense, uh, if white plays the d4 and we play d5 and we get an exchange variation, black still has two center pawns and white's missing one. And I've always seen those as advantages of the Karakhan defense, but it looks like at the Grandmaster level, the French defense is far more common, so maybe there's something to it. In fact, if we look at the Masters database, which as far as I know includes all titled players in uh, classical games, the most common response to e4 is the Sicilian defense, which is, you know, too complicated for me to learn right now. The next most common is e5, which is just a king's pawn opening, and there's all sorts of openings that can arise from that. And then the French is the next most common, and Karakhan is the fourth most common. French being third, and Karakhan being fourth. And it's not quite twice as many people playing the French, but it's getting close to twice as many. So maybe there's something to the French, and I'm going to take a look at it. Looking here at the player's database, Lee Chess says I've played eight games, and that's because a couple of days ago, I started in my Blitz games, which I do still play occasionally. I started playing E6 as the response to E4, just for the fun of it, just to see if I could get through the opening. I did lose most of these games. I lost five out of the eight. I want to look at those games and see if I did okay in the opening. This is the first one in which I played the French defense. As far as I know, I might have done it when I first got back into chess a couple of years ago, but I was just move, moving pieces at the time. I didn't even know openings had names back then. Now, one thing I didn't expect this first time that I played it was that my opponent would just push that E pawn again. And that's what my opponent did in this game. So that threw me off immediately. According to the engine, that gives me an immediate advantage if I play C5 here. Well, I didn't know that. And what I was expecting was either the D4 push or getting the knight out. Actually, it says knight to C3 here on the engine. And it looks like in the master's database, D4 and D3 are the two most common responses here, and knight to F3. But anyway, my opponent just pushed that pawn forward. So yeah, I'm supposed to play C5 or knight to C6. Uh, I guess of those two, C5 makes more sense, so the knight can go behind it. But I just played D5, which is what I thought the second move of the French was. That, of course, gives the advantage back to white if they play D4. And now it's as if they had played D4 and I played D5, and then they pushed the E pawn. So it kind of transposes to the advanced variation, which... This was one of the variations that I had expected. Again, the engine says I can play c5, but it also says knight to e7, which is interestingly what I played. It's not what masters play here. Masters play c5. Almost all of them will play c5 here. And I suppose the idea is, you know, to get, help get rid of that. But I played knight to e7, and that's probably because I've been playing the Karakhan, and so maybe I was thinking about coming around this way. Looks like masters and stockfish would play knight to f3 here, but my, uh, my opponent brought that bishop down. That's so unusual that there's no games that have reached this position in the masters database. In the Lee Chess players database, quite a few thousand games have reached this position. And I just played h6, which is what Lee Chess players play, but the engine wouldn't here. The engine would play c5 here. Very interesting. Okay, well, I did play h6, which leaves me still with a very slight advantage. They're supposed to bring that back, looks like, to e3, which is, okay, I guess, an okay spot for it. But instead, they went back that way, and I'm supposed to play g5 or c5, either one. And looks like g5 is the most popular move. That's what I played. So we're in move five, and I'm doing okay in this opening. I have nearly a minus one advantage. They now have to put that on g3, and what am I supposed to play? c5. Okay, see, that's what I didn't know, because I haven't studied the French defense until now. And that's if you count this as studying. But anyway, so c5 has been really important on several turns, and I didn't realize that it was. I thought I was supposed to move this over here in castle, kind of like uh, in the Dutch defense, I guess. And it does look like nobody at my level plays c5. Well, way down here. It's only 2% of us. But most of us get the knight out, the knight over here, the bishop over here, or that knight out. Well, I put this one here, preparing to castle. They got their other bishop out, and I'm still doing okay if I play c5. 
Well, again, I didn't know that. I put this knight here to kind of block that bishop, also aiming at this pawn. Again, probably left over from the Karakhan defense. They are supposed to just take it, and they did. Okay, well, I took back, and then f4 is the best move. That's what they played. But we're still relatively close to even out to move 9. And now I was supposed to get the other knight out, or maybe get this bishop out, but instead I just pushed that pawn. I guess, because, what was I worried about? Oh, maybe I was trying to prevent the development of that knight. But they just can put it on e2, which is what they did. And now we're out of even the Lee Chess Players database. But I castled here, and now my opponent is up plus one, almost plus two. So that was where I made the mistake. Is that where it lost me the game, or did I go ahead again at some point? Because we're definitely out of the opening now. Um, looks like we're going to stay at around plus two this whole time. Oh, they made a mistake going over there. I should have just played f6. Oh, well, I didn't know that. We just played over here on the queen side a little bit, but we're back close to even. So I didn't lose this game because of the opening, and as we saw all the way up through move 10, I'm really close to even, so I feel okay about that. What I learned from this game is that I should have played c5 a lot sooner. Let's take a look at another one. In my second attempt at the French defense, my opponent again didn't play d4, but they got that knight out, and I'm supposed to play d5 here. Is that what I played? Okay. So I'm doing okay, and they, they can take it or push past here. My opponent took which I suppose is normal. By the way, this is called the knight variation, whereas the other one transposed into the advanced variation. Okay, knight variation makes sense because the knight is there. I ought to be able to remember that. Uh, here it only makes sense to take back, and I did. Now we've each, you know, given up our e-pawn. And here a master would play d4, and that's also what Stockfish would play. My opponent uh, checked over here, even though that pawn is there, because this isn't the Karakhan defense, so my c-pawn is raring to go here. Yeah, you're already out of the master's database because no master would play that, I think. But this guy did, and uh, or, or lady, I, I don't know. And so I blocked it with the pawn, so I'm ahead. Move four, very, very slightly ahead. Are we still in the Lee Chess Players database? Oh yeah, we sure are. 370,000 games have reached this position. Uh, the engine would just pull this back here, but people at my level usually go to A4, looks like. My opponent went back there. Okay, good for them. Knight to F6 is one of my better moves, and it's the most common. My opponent can castle or play d4. Those are the two most common moves. They did castle. Looks like bishop to d6 is the next move for the French player here. That's what I played. That's what the engine would play. That's what they play. So that's what we did. I guess it's because it makes sense. It's a good place to put the bishop, in, and I'm prepared to castle here. Now here, the engine would play d4. Most players on Lee Chess would play d4, but my opponent got the other knight out. Castling is pretty good for me, and I did that. All right, move seven. Close to even. Second time playing this op opening, so I'm doing okay. Now did they play d4? Now they did. Okay, now the engine, my opponent, and Lee Chess players database match up with d4. It's a good time for me to put my rook on the open file, according to the engine, or develop the other knight. Looks like in the player's database, people go bishop to g4 here. I just moved it up to, to uh, e6. Was that bad? Looks like it wasn't great, but we're still even. I mean, I, I thought this was okay. I, I've got two bishops here, you know, patrolling medium length diagonals. I can put the knight behind it. I thought I was doing all right, and it looks like I'm, I'm you know, I'm not hurting here. They they tried to pin the knight knowing that I was about to play this on the next move, which, which I did. At this point, Stockfish would just leave that there and, and move their bishop up to d3, I guess, you know, aiming down here. Or they might just pull this back, leave it pointed through there. My opponent played h3. I'm not sure why. I don't know if they thought I was going to try to pin their knight too, or if they thought I was going to start attacking their bishop and they were going to give themselves a way out. Okay, Stockfish would play h6 here. All right, I understand it usually does if you have a bishop sitting there. The engine usually says to, to go ahead and threaten it, but it looked like they already took care of that problem. If I threaten it, they're going to go there, and if I throw the g-pawn, they're just, you know, they're going to go around. So I just got my queen out of the pen. So this knight is fine now. And so instead of just moving this or bringing the other bishop back, my opponent thought the whole reason they put this over here was to take this knight, I guess. And they did. So, okay. I took back and I'm ahead. After 11 moves, I'm up minus one. But this time I didn't see it recommending c5. And I'm guessing that's because of the way things changed. I'm guessing c5 then is more important in the advanced variation than it is in whatever variation this was. And I think that's because in this one, my opponent delayed d4 quite a bit. They didn't play d4 till move 8. So that's why c5 wasn't being recommended to me all those times. Oh, also because I had to play an early c6 due to their bishop check. So I'm trying to figure it out, but but I did okay. I'm not, I'm not too disappointed in that. Let's look at the next one. 
All right, in this one, again, my opponent did not play the d4. They played the knight to f3 version, and I played d5. Okay, so that part's exactly the same as the previous game. And again, my opponent took, and I took back. So identical to the previous game, but this one played d4 right away instead of waiting till move eight like the last one. All right, it looks like most people, most masters here play knight to f6, and Stockfish says that one's fine. Okay, I don't feel bad about that. Now, it looks like grandmasters would play here bishop to d3, I assume in preparation for castling. Also because they've studied the engine lines, and that's what Stockfish would play to. My opponent is neither Stockfish nor a titled player. They played c4. I guess maybe they thought we would transpose into a queen's gambit or something, but we're still in the French defense knight variation. Sorry, I just said a bunch of stuff that doesn't make sense. I've cut it out. Both Stockfish and Grandmasters would play Bishop to b4 check here. LHS players would play c6, and both of those are the two top engine recommendations. I didn't know that. Um, I just played over here, which isn't horrible. The engine would probably just push past with the c5 pawn, but Grandmasters and my opponent played knight to c3, so they are thinking of this now as a queen's pawn opening, I guess. And it's still, I'm supposed to play Bishop to b4. I guess kind of playing into the idea of the Nemzo Indian Queen's Pawn opening. So was it bad for me to take here? Yeah, it wasn't great. That's probably inaccurate. And no Grandmaster would have played that. No titled player. And that's because it allows them to get their bishop out. And I should, I should have probably gotten this knight out. But instead I developed that bishop. And that was a huge mistake if my opponent sees this. And I think that's because if I take back, they can check me here protected by this pawn. And when I move out of check again, wherever I'm going to go, then they pick off this bishop and they're protected by the queen. I'm guessing that's what would happen. The engine thinks I wouldn't take the bishop. I would just move over. But my opponent didn't see it. They castled, which allowed me to castle. And I'm still okay, pretty close to okay, after nine moves or after eight moves. Then when my opponent came and did this, we're dead even. Again, knight to c6. I wasn't going to play knight to c6 here, I don't think, because of that pawn. That pawn's right there, so I got my knight out this way, but that wasn't great. They're moving their queen up wasn't great, but h6 was the engine's move, and they need... No, the engine can't decide. They either drop back one or take. Nope, it's changed its mind. Going back to h4 is okay, too. Okay, that's what my opponent did, and I just went after it. That's ridiculous, uh, because it's ridiculous because they can check here because this pawn is pinned. Oh, wow. And one, yeah, once they check here with the queen, I have to move over. They get that pawn for free. And then that one's not defended. So they're just going to be chopping off pawns in through here. Okay. But they didn't check there. They moved the bishop back. And I'm supposed to come up here to keep them from doing that. But I didn't know this pawn was pinned. I don't think my opponent knew it either. What does that do? Not sure. They came after my bishop. I'm supposed to bring it back, but I took the knight. So where I messed up then was right there on move seven. We're already not in the opening anymore, according to the master's database. But here I definitely should have just developed this knight or brought this out to d6, or they wouldn't have the trick with the knight coming into the middle because of the, the bishop here. Maybe that's why knight to c6, but it looked like knight to c6 would be met immediately with this pawn moving forward. Okay, so that's the mistake, because, but my opponent didn't see the mistake, and then I made another mistake, which was here. No, sorry, that wasn't me. This was me. Yeah, again, knight to c6. Okay, but that's because I'm not used to these, uh, you know, this kind of thing here, because I'm playing the, you know, I'm used to playing the Karakon defense, where I have a pawn there. In the Karakon defense, I almost always have a pawn on d5, so that bishop is not pointed at f7. But in this one, I was even out to move nine. So again, the opening really wasn't the problem. It was it was after this. In this one, again, my opponent played knight to f3 and I played d5 and they took and I took. So that's, I what, three games in a row that were identical. And in this one, my opponent did play the d4 straight away. I played knight to f6. But in this one, they checked me immediately. And then it, now you're almost out of the master's database. Looks like uh, the engine would just block that with this bishop here. But I blocked with the other bishop, which is a problem because of this knight. And since no titled player would have blocked the way that I did, we're out of the opening book now. Perhaps my opponent had played this far before because they did hop that knight in there really quick. I need to defend the bishop with my queen, so I did. I moved it here thinking I could defend both of these, but still not be in the way of my king. But my opponent just went ahead and took it anyway. And so when I took, and they took back, and I took back, now I have two center pawns. And they got a knight out over there and were even after nine moves. I got the bishop out thinking I could castle here pretty quick, and they ran over here to pin this knight, which isn't pinned at all. Oh, and the engine would just move over there. Whoa. 
Stockfish often does not like castling. It just wants to put the king over here and defend stuff with it. But I defended that the knight with the knight. And then my opponent came over here and pinned that knight. Or, you know, that knight's actually pinned. So I just moved that pawn up. And they ran away. And I castled. So after 12 moves, I have a really slight advantage. And then they took the knight. I guess they thought if they put the bishop all the way over there, they might as well use it. And they did. Oh, I what? Oh, the engine says take back with the rook. I'd be up minus, almost minus one if I took back with the rook. All right. But, uh, but then they castled over there and that's a blunder because of, because of knight to g4. Wait, sorry. What does knight to g4 do? Well, the engine says, of course, I'm going to fork their rooks because the, in the, the engine thinks the opponent would just play knight to f3 and then I would fork their rooks. I don't think the opponent would play knight to f3 here. What? Why, why would they do that? Why, why wouldn't they protect the pawn with the rook or something? Wouldn't they just, for a second, it said they would bring this rook over. Well, then I would just get that pawn. But now it's saying to bring the D rook over to E1. No, not to protect the pawn. Just, it would go to D1 because this pawn's undefended. But their best move is this, and then I would fork them. Well, the reason that after they played this, I didn't find this move is because I would not expect my opponent to just play F3 and let me fork their rooks. And bishop, for that matter. I wouldn't have expected that. Maybe a couple of hundred points ago, I might have tried this thinking, aha, I'm going to get a fork. But then, but then my opponent just would have defended that pawn. Oh, it says I can go ahead and take it because my rook's pointed there. Oh. But then they would just move this rook over, wouldn't they? Nope, because I'll take here with check. Wow. Well, I'm going to try to remember knight to g5 then because that's where I messed up, apparently. Not really, though, because I'm still slightly ahead even after I blundered. But my opponent blundered back. And now I can still play knight to g4, but I didn't. I did that. And they play that, which is bad because... Well, I can just take it, can't I? Okay, so I did okay in this one too. Going to the next one here. In this one, when I played the French, my opponent played d3, which is in the master's database. But again, I'm supposed to play d5. My opponent played that knight there. And then I took their e-pawn because it looks like if they take back, I'll get their queen. And this is actually still in the master's database. They did take back and I did take their queen. Now they've lost the right to castle. And it looks like the of the Grand Master games that have reached this position, four of them, two played bishop to c5. One got this knight out and one got the other knight out. Why did one of those? I got this knight out. Even though, I mean, they could have pushed immediately. But instead, my opponent played here. Oh, I, I can just take that pawn. Well, I didn't see that. I came over here thinking, not only was I thinking that pawn's undefended, but now I can castle because this bishop's out. But my opponent came over there, which I guess they wanted to trade, and I did. And then I castled. They played h4, as apparently a bunch of opponents have been doing here, so I did this. I'm up minus one. They played h5. I finally realized I could take that e-pawn, so I took it. I'm, this time I am aiming for the fork. I assume they're going to, you know, bring their king over to protect it. But instead they attacked the knight that was about to fork them. And I forked them. They moved over. I got the rook. Knight to a3. I'm not sure what that does. It allows me to get my knight out for one thing. They came toward it. And I, and I took that h-pawn. So in this one I did pretty well. But I think it was because of my opponent messing up here. Now again, the part where I thought they had messed up is this. But that's actually been played by titled players here. What I don't understand is how we're supposed to be even after this. The engine just thinks we're even. If I'll just play knight to c6 or maybe a6. And like I said, the grandmasters have played bishop to c5. And white has won a bunch of those games. But we're even as long as they don't mess it up. And that messes up. Doing pretty good here. I don't know that I've actually you know, learned anything about the opening. But I am learning that I didn't lose these games because of the opening. Because I did lose more than half of these games. But I lost them later from, from tactics and things, which, you know, is common with just about any opening. Let's look at another one here. And this one, my opponent did play d4 on the second move, finally. So we got this, and they have a choice. They have several options here. Looks like knight to c3 is what masters play. It's what the engine suggests. My opponent played knight to f3, which I think allows me to take this pawn, but I didn't know that. Well, grandmasters know it, but, but I just got this knight out. And they took mine, and I took theirs. Now my opponent's ahead, and they played c4, I came back, they played their best move. Okay, now here c5 is showing up again, I should have played c5, but here I did get tricked in the, into the old d4 idea coming over here and pinning that knight, but that fails I think because of this. They can check me, I can block with, sorry that's what the engine said at first, the engine said queen to a4 check, I assume I would block with the knight to protect the bishop, but then they can push a pawn and when I take they're going to take and it's, it's going to get pretty messy I think. But instead, my opponent just played a3 there, 
So I just took the knight. They had to double pawns, and then I can castle, but I should probably play c5. Okay, well, I castled, but my opponent's up plus one if they'll play bishop to d3, which they did. Okay, so I messed that up. Where did I mess this up? Was it right here? When my opponent played knight to f3, I should have just taken. Okay, well, that makes sense. That's the only move that works here, according to the engine. Not according to grandmasters, because some grandmasters have just played knight to f6 here. Four of them. And one has played c5, one played knight to c6, but about half of them did take that pawn. Stockfish laughed at the other ones because that's the only move. Okay, makes sense. I think I can remember that. Here's another one in which my opponent played this knight here. They got the other knight out, which is the two knights variation. And in this one, I'm supposed to just push past. Okay, see, I think I remember that from the Karakon defense. It would be, you know, the C pawn instead of the E pawn. But when they get that other knight out, I do push in there and then uh, protect it with C C5. I think I should have known that, but I took here instead, which some grandmasters have apparently played because they've been in this position before. How bad was knight to F6? Eh, it wasn't great because they can just take it, but they didn't. The eight, the eight titled player games that have reached this position, they just took the knight, and that's what Stockfish would do. But they went over there, which I should just play h6, but instead I got this bishop out. They came in here looking for this, I guess. I should have castled. I think that's obvious. So here I did mess up in the opening because my opponent was trying a trap, and I could solve it by having a rook right there protecting that pawn. But of course, it was a blitz game. I only have a few seconds, obviously, to look at each move. And I have a little, you know, red flags that go off in my brain when I have an opponent that's attacking with two knights. They know they can't win with that, but they saw, they, you know, thought they saw a little opportunity. I get flustered and I make mistakes. And I did here. I didn't castle. I did that, which allows them to come in. And I think I was behind the rest of the game. The crazy thing is, I honestly thought I was in check here and I tried to move my king. Oops, I can't go there. So I had to come over here. And so I just moved my king. Yeah, so they got my queen. That's how flustered I got by this little trap here, and I realized that I had missed something. And, and I think what I missed was that castling would have solved that problem when they brought the other knight thinking, oh my, I'm going to get something. I could have just castled. Castling would have solved it. I would have been ahead. I might take a more serious look at this a little bit later, but, but because these are blitz games, they're not going to follow very far the grandmaster lines or the engine lines. And I'm playing people that don't know, you know, the proper responses. So that's probably going to be the case with it. But I did look through YouTube and I found tons of videos saying, here's some traps for the Karakon defense, and I'm guessing that's where a bunch of my opponents found the traps that they're playing against the Karakon defense that, that I'm, you know, having trouble with, and I found almost no videos saying here's traps for the French defense, and that's one reason I'm considering it. So thank you to those of you that have suggested it, and I'll see you next time.